Today is day two of the wake on Long Island for slain police officer Jonathan Diller. Uh, Governor Kathy Hochul expected to pay her respects today. Meanwhile, the suspects in the case could be indicted by a grand jury as early as today. Eyewitness News reporter Phil Tate from, has more from Massapequa Park. Another somber day as final goodbyes continue as the city bids farewell to Officer Diller, who was tragically killed in the line of duty, doing the job that he loved during what should have been a routine traffic stop. Yesterday, scenes of sadness all around as hundreds poured inside the Massapequa Park Funeral Home. A strong show of support from the department as a sea of blue flooded streets before paying their respects to a fallen officer, devoted husband, father, and friend. For Diller's supervisor, he hopes his brother and sisters in blue will bridge the gap for this family. We need to be strong because if we're not strong, then we need to be there for the family. He used to come into work. He used to show us pictures every day. A new picture of his son. We FaceTiming and talking on the phone and stuff like that. And he was just so proud, so proud of his family. Among the hundreds that packed inside this Nassau County funeral home, former President Donald Trump, he shook hands with NYPD Police Commissioner Eddie Caban moments before he paid his respects, spending some time inside with Diller's widow and family. As hundreds mourn, the alleged cop killer Guy Rivera was arraigned yesterday at his bedside on the charge of murder of a police officer, attempted murder, and criminal possession of a weapon. 41-year-old Lindy Jones, the other suspect now in police custody, was charged the day prior with criminal possession of a weapon and possession of a defaced gun. Both suspects are being held without bail. As both suspects are officially charged, it's likely that they'll be indicted by a grand jury as early as today. Meantime, here at the funeral home, we expect Governor Kathy Hochul to be among the mourners tomorrow. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. It seems as if Democrats are not popular with our first responders, okay? The real heroes in this country, okay? Our firefighters, our police officers, um, Democrats, again, they don't seem to be too popular with that group of people, okay? Because we just saw how fighter fighters booed New York Attorney General uh, Letitia James when she uh, attended a ceremony to honor them in the wake of her political persecution against former President Trump. Again, clearly, obviously, they do not appreciate what she's trying to do to her political opponent, trying to financially bankrupt Trump because he doesn't agree with the establishment. And apparently, again, this is not just a dislike for her. This is a dislike for most Democrats, okay? It seems like they just don't like Democrats, okay? Because you have NYPD who reportedly kicked New York Governor Kathy Hochul out of a wake ceremony for murder police officer Jonathan Diller, okay? So, again, this is pretty fascinating because Trump showed up to uh, the wake of this murder police officer. And um, it seems to me that they welcome Trump with open arms, okay? The same way that the firefighters, anytime Trump shows up, they welcome him with open arms as well too. Uh, but when it comes to Democrats, like for example, uh, Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, they don't really seem to like her too much. And understandably so, because she, uh, along with these other woke Democrats, again, like Letitia James and others, uh, they are making it very, very, very difficult and hard for police officers to do their job. Mainly when you talk about these soft on crime bail reform laws that basically make it so it is pointless for police to do their job and to arrest criminals because they just end up uh, getting re-released and they're back on the streets, right? And they're having to re-arrest the same people over and over and over and over again, which is what led to the murder of police officer Jonathan Diller. Okay. So I totally understand why NYPD would be pissed at Kathy Hochul and would not welcome her to this ceremony because you can argue that, uh, laws and reforms that Democrats like her support, uh, contributed to the death of this officer. So let's read here. 
Uh, Democratic New York Governor Kathy Hochul abruptly left the wake of slain hero New York Police uh, Department officer Jonathan Diller on Friday, uh, police sources told the New York Post. Hochul showed face around 1.45 for the second day of viewing at the Massapequa Long Island Funeral Home, hosting the services according to the Post. She was only there for about 10 minutes before she was abruptly... I guess told to leave, right? I'm pretty sure this is what this article means to say. Uh, sources told the Post. One man dressed in a black suit appeared to yell at the governor as he was seen speaking uh, animately and gesturing boldly as she entered her car on the way out, the Post reported. Several cops were seen applauding the man after he confronted her, uh, the source told the Post. Before the services, Sergeant's Benevolent Association President uh, Vincent J., uh, Valalong, uh, warned city politicians not to attend the services. Notice how, again, that didn't apply to Trump, right? Just city politicians, AKA, uh, New York governor Hochul. Okay. Eric Adams. Okay. Probably Letitia James, uh, probably the Alvin Braggs, right? Nah, you guys are not welcome, right? Don't, don't show up, right? You're Democrats. You're probably partially responsible for what happened. Um, yeah, we, we just don't want you here. Okay. That, that's essentially the sentiment here. Uh, quote, their presence is more than a distraction. It is a stain on the legacy of a true hero who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, Valley Long wrote in a letter, according to the Post, he also said the city's leaders should feel morally responsible for the officer's killing. The Post reported. Career criminal Guy Rivera was charged with murder Thursday after allegedly gunning down Diller on Tuesday while the officer attempted to confront him for parking illegally. Rivera had 21 prior arrests, mostly for gun and assault charges, the Post reported. Diller is survived by his wife and his infant son. Again, this is a terrible story, tragic story. But again, it's a story that we see all too often in this country. I mean, there's never been a worse time to be a police officer when it comes to the chances of you losing your life, uh, when it comes to how difficult it is to do your job, uh, when it comes to the risk associated with doing your job correctly and then being accused of being a racist and then potentially being sent to jail and then some lunatic tries to stab you to death while you're in jail, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, the risk versus reward is just, it's just not there, okay? It's just not there, okay? And again, part of the problem is are these soft on crime policies that are being promoted by these Democrats, okay? And, um, you know, a lot of these soft on crime policies, they are promoting because they're trying to appeal to the far left, the far left that seems to dismiss uh, these types of police killings. Like, for example, what happened with Mr. Jonathan Diller, uh, because that seems to be what a far left activist did when Eric Adams was discussing this issue with the Breakfast Club. Take a look. People are upset, too. They feel like the, the prison reform is, is bad for New York City. They're saying people do crimes, they get out immediately, and then they commit the crimes. We just seen an officer that passed away a couple of days ago, rest in peace to him, and always healing energy to his family. But they say that individual was arrested for a gun and has a, a record the size of we don't know what. And they're saying that people are doing crimes and they're getting back out. Officers don't want to arrest people. A lot of officers don't even want to be officers anymore because the people that they're arresting get out so fast. So what do you say to that? And, and brother, let me tell you something. I say this term all the time. Idealism collides with realism. Mm -hmm. This far leftist mindset that believes we should not have a criminal justice system in place mm -hmm. We're going to look like some of these other cities that you're seeing with a lack of a criminal justice system in place. We're losing correction officers. Mm -hmm. We're losing district attorneys. We're losing police officers. We're losing probation officers. We're losing school safety agents. Every piece of our public safety apparatus that the everyday working class person wants, mm -hmm. we're seeing it all of a sudden erode. And we're going to lose the foundation of our prosperity, and that's, and that's public safety. So when you look at these cases, we have three problems in this city that if you dig into it, you'll see how they continue to intersection between each other. What are they? We have one, we have a recidivist problem. This is not we, true. We, it's a revolving door. 38 people that assaulted transit workers were, elest, were arrested 1,100 times. 545 people that were arrested for shoplifting were arrested 7,500 7, times. The person who shot that police officer, his driver was just arrested for having a gun in April of last year. Now he's back 
doing the same thing all over again. These guys are arrested 10, 15 times. It's a small population of people that are repeated offenders. This, you said that there's a difference between perception and reality, how people feel afraid versus how safe New York actually is. And I agree with you, but I said that it's your own rhetoric and NYPD's rhetoric that plays into that. And you did it just now because the reality is a condition of release for everybody, for every crime, whether it be non-bail eligible or bail eligible, is that if you commit a crime and you're rearrested, that you, uh, that you bail can and will be set on you. So that's the first thing. Second of all, they have conducted multiple studies, but the Brennan Center literally just put out one less than two percent of anybody in new york city this released on bail is arrest rearrested for any violent crime more importantly in the I'm same my, my, my in bail. the same breath that I'm we want in the same breath that you want to sensationalize <laughs> me want to highlight and point out oh an officer was killed the, uh, the other day which is a rare occurrence across the united states but let alone in new york new york police officers have killed at least seven people this year including well, a 19 year old an nyp officer killed a 19 year old in dismiss, queens yesterday i'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to but you do us. of the a 31 rare, people dead at Rikers a rare, a rare and the 19 year old killed yesterday. I, 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 I feel like I don't want to take you out of context and I don't want people to all of a sudden criticize that you have been dismissive of a Ma Mayor young Adams, man being shot Mayor and Adams, killed. that's not going to work on Listen, me. I, I'm not trying to work anything yeah. on you. I'm just, I, we, I lost a member of the police department the same way I go to see the mother of 11 year old baby that was 11 month old baby that was shot in the head when I first became man and I sat in a hospital with her. The same way I go visit these mothers who lose their children to gun violence, I go see them. Yes, but just not the I, mothers just of the people I, who are dying just, in Rikers. Just as I go, just as I go to see a the, the the family member of a slain police officer, I go visit those parents that lose their loved ones. Visit, are now, you visiting do you do the that? family? Do of the, you do that? First of all, yesterday do do I held a Riker. You, you, I, I represented you hundreds. You went to visit. You went to visit all, all, the family member of, of a slain officer. No, not the slain officer. Oh, okay, of course you no, didn't. No, but what about the mm -hmm. 19 year old that was killed yesterday by mm -hmm. NYPD in Queens when mm -hmm. he called for help? Have you said anything <laughs> about that? Are you visiting them? Yeah. The the the. Mm. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand how cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs these far leftists are, okay? Because I'm not defending Mayor Adams, right? But he definitely is a lot more sane than that woman is, especially when it comes to policing and crime and so-called criminal justice, okay? Because that 19-year-old she's talking about, again, they never go into details about this stuff. There's a reason why she doesn't go into details about it. That 19-year-old was allegedly having a mental health episode, okay, where... Uh, he called 911 on himself and he uh, ended up getting shot and killed by police after charging the police twice with scissors. OK, scissors are a weapon. OK, and the police showed up. Uh, they tried to take him to go and get um, mental health services. Right. So they tried to get him some help. However, while trying to take him to do that again, he charged the police with scissors um, and they had to shoot and kill him. Now, they initially tried to stop him with a taser. The taser didn't work, okay? So they tried what they could in order to avoid having to shoot him. But unfortunately, because this 19-year-old made this decision, okay? Now, again, it could have been mental health, could not have been mental health. I don't know, but apparently it was a mental health thing. Um, That's why he lost his life. To compare that to a police officer getting shot and killed by a career criminal doing a routine traffic stop is disgusting. Disgusting. But again, that's how deranged these individuals are, right? These far leftists, okay? They care more about the lives of criminals and people who, again, let's be honest, are they contributing as much to society as the police officer? Okay? Because if you are interacting with police, right then there's a chance that hey you, you probably aren't contributing too much to society right in, in regards to positives and i don't know if that's the case for this 19 year old but it seems to me that so-called social justice uh activists like this woman care more about criminals than they do about police officers she don't give a damn about the police officer getting shot and killed in the line of duty but oh eric adams you should show up and and, and say something about the 19-year-old that ended up getting shot and killed because he tried to attack police. Amazing. Amazing. Right? Um, but again, you know, you're hearing from Eric Adams what the issue is. A lot of these criminals are getting arrested and then they're being let out again and again and again and again and again to the point where, again, a lot of people are like, well, why even do this job? 
right? You have police officers quitting, saying we don't want to do this anymore. And I don't care what the so-called statistics say. Crime is not down. It's not down. Because, again, if crime is not being reported anymore, if police aren't showing up, okay, if they're not taking the crime seriously because there's no point in really even investigating the crime, then don't sit and try to tell me that crime is down, right? Your statistics are flawed, right? I think there's a chance that your statistics probably are not accurate. I really don't think they're accurate. I really don't, okay? So I don't really buy into this narrative that crime is down. Listen to the people on the ground. Listen to the people in these cities like Oakland, San Francisco, New York, Chicago. They're telling you everything you need to know about whether or not crime is up or down. And a vast majority of the time, they're going to tell you, no, I, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. And it's not because of what they see on social media. It's because of what they're experiencing in their own lives. And police officers resigning. People refusing to be a part of the system or to work for the system anymore because there's no point is even more of a sign that, yeah, things are out of control in these cities. I don't care what these people come out here and say. So, again, there's no surprise here. There should be no surprise that you see the NYPD revolting against Kathy Hochul the same way that the New York Fire Department revolted against um, Letitia James because ultimately they... These politicians are making it impossible for them to do their jobs. And unfortunately, the consequence of that is fatal in multiple ways. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.